This episode of Internet Today is brought to you by Honey. It is the culmination of what he describes as years of work and millions of dollars. But the launch of Mike Lindell's Frank Speech Social Media Network Social was, Media Network <laughs> was a far cry from the smooth rollout that he'd apparently planned for. Uh, very quick recap for anyone who is somehow still out of the loop or is just finding this channel in this video now. My Pillow uh, CEO Mike Lindell has launched a new social media platform called Frank Speech as a free speech platform that he thinks will rival Twitter, YouTube, and other platforms that have banned conservative voices and what he sees as a violation of their free speech. In reality, those who have been banned or had posts removed from various platforms simply faced clear-cut consequences for violating the site's TOS, and in the case of many of the outspoken conservatives, uh, they, did, they got banned or whatever from posting conspiracy theories about election fraud or inciting violence or attacking democracy or just straight-up hate speech in some cases. But the First Amendment says... Anyway, amidst a lost election for Donald Trump, a man who Mike Lindell idolizes and apparently just bet everything on, his entire yeah. fortune, he bet on the wrong horse. Uh, he's got dwindling pillow sales due to a pullback from retail outlets who are trying to distance themselves from Mike Lindell and his brand. Yeah. Uh, there's what appears to be a severe lack of sleep happening with this man, uh, which is probably unsafe for a guy his age and, yeah. you know, for a guy who was addicted to crack or speed or whatever for many years raises some questions. Mm -hmm. He's also got dueling billion dollar lawsuits with Dominion voting systems. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, despite all that on his big comfortable plate, Mike Lindell still found time to pour his heart, soul, and wallet into creating a website and platform where conservatives would feel safe posting whatever they wanted. A safe space, if you will. Yeah, cool. But as we learned last week, this wouldn't be the... Uh, kind of anything goes platform <laughs> that it was billed as because it was announced that the site's rules would essentially just mimic the Ten Commandments from the Bible, uh, making it instantaneously more restrictive than any other social media platform in existence, right from the jump. Yeah. Uh, you technically can't say anything bad about Jesus, but you also can't disparage your parents. You probably shouldn't be posting on Sundays and reposting any memes that you found. Nope. Thou shalt not steal. You're out of there. Sorry, fuck Jerry. This site is not for you. This is the one thing I agree with yeah, Frank yeah. Speech on. <laughs> <laughs> no Frank, meme thievery. You know, Frank Speech got it right uh, with the with the no thievery. So there you go. Now, Frank Speech, it, it was supposed to have a soft early access launch late last week, but none of the VIPs who had signed up for the site using their phone numbers were able to access that site. And the consensus uh, among people seems to be that the it was the overwhelming popularity of this hot new platform that was making it impossible for anything to roll out smoothly. Everyone wanted to get in at the same time. And so the early access dates were changed to Sunday with the entire site scheduled to open to the public on Monday morning of this week. Well, Sunday comes and goes without so much as a peep, and based on the non-existent VIP access that preceded the date change, this doesn't really come as a surprise. So everyone's real, real focus, it shifts to the global public launch on Monday morning. Yeah, it's happening, folks. Yep, uh, Monday morning rolls around, and uh, are you surprised to hear that things went pretty much exactly as anyone could have predicted? Yeah. This site is essentially inaccessible because the servers can't handle the load of uh, looky-loos who are curious for a peek at what Lindell's been cooking up. Or, I don't know, maybe everyone wants to join this hot new website. Yeah, it, it must be the uh, millions upon millions of people that want to yeah. eagerly join the, free, the new free speech network where they can post whatever they want. Yeah. They can post whatever and they like, want. Yeah, I mean, sure, there's definitely a good amount of people who are earnestly attempting to access and sign up for frank speech, because they are still uh, completely in the deep end and they take Mike Lindell's word as gospel because he seems to be the last public figure actively pushing the election fraud narrative. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there's certainly no shortage of attention from a ton of people who are just plain curious about this site or, you know, wanted to watch the dumpster catch fire live as it happened. Mm -hmm. So things have already started off poorly due to the site not being even able to load for a decent amount of time. But those who did finally get access found that this wasn't really a social media platform at all. No. Almost as if Mike Lindell doesn't know what that means. Yeah, it seems as though he doesn't grasp the very simple concept of what social media or a social media platform yeah. does. Yeah, it just looks like a random WordPress news site. It's filled with news articles, which... <laughs> Mirror the type of stuff that you'd see on other far-right platforms like OAN, Newsmax, Breitbart, and so on. And also plenty of other, uh, that I found from this website, uh, right-wing outlets that I didn't even know existed. Because a lot of this stuff is just reposted from those sites. 
Um, but now it's all in one hub. Frank speech. Yeah, the hub. Where anything goes, as long as you don't take the Lord's name in vain or lie. Also, you can't post. So what are the points of the rules? Because it's clearly curated. Well, I, that's a great way to uh, ensure that no one breaks the rules, is don't allow posting. At all. <laughs> no posting. Uh, anyways, even on Tuesday, while we were writing this episode, the site seemed to have no section resembling anything that you could call a social media feature where users who have signed up could post anything at all. It's really just a bunch of inflammatory articles that seem to be sourced and reposted from other conservative outlets or podcasts from people like Dinesh D'Souza and Diamond and Silk and also Mike Lindell himself, which I don't think he's paying for these podcasts. I think they're just reposts of podcasts that exist. Uh, and there's also a bunch of videos either sourced from other outlets or produced by Lindell, like his Absolute Proof series. Um, a lot of the links on the site won't load properly, or they're just headlines that, that, that then leak, link to another source, like I was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. um, there's also some random sports news thrown in. Uh, and there's some links that just go to a blank page that reads file not found on top. Like there's a, there's a link on there, that, there's a headline. It doesn't say who the author is or anything. It just says, uh, Earthquakes at churches. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow. I would like to know more. Tell me more about these earthquakes and at churches. it just goes to file not found. That's the devil. And the devil took your article away. Also an article, I think we talk about it here, with it's like the, how the welfare state failed America, and it just doesn't exist. You click on it, and it doesn't exist. It's, he just put, this is like, it's Mike Lindell's notes app. He's like, these are articles he plans on writing. So he's just like, make the page. And then the, you know. Yeah, it's like a drag and drop template website. And yeah. they did like what it should look like, but never built anything else outside of that. So oddly enough, uh, the SEO tags, which are usually hidden in the source of a website, you can't see it with your eyes. On no. this website, they are visible on each article that does load. And the tags are literally the same, no matter what article you're looking at. Yeah. Whether it's an article about the results of an Indy car race in Alabama, or what the welfare state has done to America, the tags listed are always COVID vaccine, conservative, Trump, censorship, China, Great Reset, Joe Biden, My Pillow, Constitutional Republic, Pandemic, Dr. Fauci, <laughs> Election 2020, Cultural Marxism, Biden Administration, COVID-19, Diamond and Silk, Gold, Absolute Proof. <laughs> With a few of them repeated in there for good message. Yeah, there's a couple That's, COVIDs. Uh, yeah. COVID, COVID, COVID. He yeah. loves Diamond and Silk, though. He's got them in the tags for the webpage and everything. They say I'm racist, but how could I be? Yes, uh, that. But that's what's weird is like these. These don't appear to be tags for the website. They appear on the sidebar of every single article, but they're not specific to any article. It's like here's the. It was the results of an IndyCar race in Alabama, and it's like Diamond and Silk COVID nineteen Great Reset Cultural Marxism. And if you click on them, what happens? I didn't click on them, but I would assume that it would just go to every other article on the website. Huh. Anyway, the site itself again is not a social media site. It has no social features that would replace something like, I don't know, Parler, Twitter, YouTube, anything for the very specific group of people that were anticipating a replacement that's what to those services. The people that were earnestly anticipating the site for valid reasons uh, outside of just wanting to watch the train wreck were like, oh, well, you know, Parler turned out to be kind of a, a honeypot because the FBI just used that oh, site to... Parler's coming back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on Apple. Um, but, like, this isn't what anyone thought it would be. It no. is literally just... A, it's basically MikeLindell.com. Yeah, it's a curated news website where he yeah. posts whatever he wants. Well, so, yeah, I mean, Mike Lindell's banned from all these other sites. Now he has a social media platform where uh, only he can post, but he can post again. So that's what you all wanted, right? You wanted to hear Mike Lindell post and read what he has to say. And now you have that. You it's also like... You wanted to post yourself as well? The formatting is uh, extremely weird and, like, not... Uh, it, uh, Maybe it's just for old people because everything is so gigantic. But, like, it looks like it's formatted for a phone, but on the desktop. It probably is. Because it fills the entire screen always. Yeah. And, yeah, the videos are autoplay, which is definitely just destroying, like, his servers. So, like, anyone who actually does get on the website, they're streaming videos, like, yeah. in HD on the front page, auto start. So, it's like, uh, anyways, let's get back to the, uh, the, the launch of this non-social, just right-wing media website. Mike Lindell, a nearly 60-year-old man, decided that it would be a great idea to launch the site alongside a marathon, 48-hour live wow. stream. A feat that not even many young Twitch streamers would consider because of how exhausting it is. A lot of Twitch streamers will do like 24-hour live streams for charity yeah. and be like, oh, God, I need at to the end, like, they look I'm... like they've seen like 
Oh, yeah. You, you ready for you sleep. You literally start going insane if you stay awake longer than 24 hours. Yeah. How could a man of his age possibly host a live stream for 48 hours straight? I mean, this is a mystery that will elude us until the end of time. How could he do that? We have no idea. How could this former stimulants addict who has now gotten clean and found the Lord, how could he manage to keep his mind and body awake for unnatural, unhealthy lengths I got of time these like pills that? from a medical doctor. <laughs> Nothing illicit. <laughs> we'll never know, I guess. Yeah, uh, it'll elude us forever. Um, but uh, because of this live stream, literally titled Frankathon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why that's funny, but it's hilarious. It's like, Frankathon sounds like a hot dog eating contest. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> it's a ninth annual 4th of July Frankathon. Come yeah. on down. We got Kobayashi. He's going to eat a whole <laughs> lot of hot dogs. He's going to race a bear. Who yeah. can eat more hot dogs? Exactly. Kobayashi or the bear. Uh, anyways, because of it, uh, because of this Frankathon, uh, everyone was able to witness uh, Mike Lindell's reactions, comments, and excuses for the chaotic launch of his site as it all played out live. And yeah, it it, it just like the launch of the site, the live stream went just as you expected. Uh, yeah. So first off, we got to give a big shout out to Zachary Patrizzo of Salon.com, Cheryl Tay of Insider, and of course Vic Berger <laughs> for documenting all this insanity as it went down, so that we would have footage and quotes for you without having to actually watch. Hours upon hours of absolutely unhinged video. Yeah. Uh, I have to assume most of it was probably pretty boring, so... Yeah, yes. it just seemed like him and, like, these two dudes in a room just talking about, like, the downfall of America for 48 yeah. hours straight. Yeah. So, yeah, links to all their coverage down below in the description. But to give you an idea of what was going on during this live stream uh, before we show some clips, it's just Mike Lindell and some guest hosts sitting in a dark room, surrounded by screens with a Frank Speech logo on it, uh, a counter that allegedly showed the amount of hits that his website was getting, like it was 1998 all over again. But yeah. like, the numbers were a bit unbelievably high. Yeah, it seemed like it was just like, oh, I, I don't know, put a trillion in and see yeah. how long it takes to count to it. And uh, most importantly, there was a phone-in system for guest callers, which consisted of Mike's cell phone with speakerphone turned on so that people could hear the callers. Absolutely zero production. Just hit the speakerphone button and put the microphone near it. Yeah. Whatever. What could go uh, wrong? Now, it starts out with uh, claiming that signups have been paused because Frank was dealing with, quote, the biggest attack in history for a website. And I was scrolling by on the bottom of the screen in the largest possible print to the point where, like, single words, like, you, it was impossible to read because it was moving super slow. It was moving super slow, but yeah. with huge text. Yeah. So it's like, there's just no one's capable of, like, reading complete thoughts that are moving that slow. It doesn't even have to be a run-on sentence. I have lost track of what yeah. was happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he had to frequently go back and post updates to, ironically enough, Parler, because his own website was inaccessible. And again, it isn't a social website, so he can't post his own small, digestible little updates on it. There's no feature for that. Uh, he would have to write a full article about what's happening all the time. Uh, then it appeared as though Lindell's personal phone number had gotten out. So he was receiving phone calls from journalists like the previously mentioned Zach Patrizzo, as well as people from the Daily Beast. Uh, here he is reacting uh, to some of their questions some valid questions yeah. about the launch of his site. Okay, so you're not at all discouraged by the, the platform still not being up. And also- Wait, by, wait, by wait, 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 what do, you, what do you mean the platform not being up? It's been up so, all day and so people are on there. What are you talking oh. about? Did you not hear? We let people on by their phone numbers in the order they were received. Yes. People that signed up was, early, you know, we let them on. They're already on there just because maybe you didn't many, put your phone many, number in. Many users are still not onto the platform. If Who you told you that? Out. What are you talking it's about? Me. There, Every 90 million people got on here today. Go print your garbage. We're done talking. You see people what we have to put up with? That they see just guys trying to say this was a failure. There's no disappointment. This was the best day for America. This was, what is it today? The Patriot Day? This is the Patriot Day. And you know what? The shot heard round the world. This will be heard round the world. You just, you know what? No one's going to bother and read your rubbish anymore. More because they're all going to be going to Frank where all the great reporters are coming where you know what you better fake change your name and come on over to Frank nobody will know that you were one of the guys working for these terrible outlets you guys are cowards you're absolute cowards is what you are absolute cowards that's three now let's keep total today we're gonna have totals here every day at Frank three terrible reporters for the Daily Beast as and, and Adam. That's and, and the other and guy, Anthony, Justin. Anthony, Morgan. Justin Borgamon. Justin Borgamon. Then we had two earlier for the, was it the Insider? Or it was Newsweek. 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 So we got Daily Beast is in the report. We're going to have the, the, the a daily report every day on Frank of the, of the 
We're gonna, we're not even going to call it the fake news. We're going to call it this pure garbage journalism. Pure garbage. <laughs> Yellow journalism. Yeah, 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 ter- yeah, terrible cowards is what they are. I guess he didn't like those questions. No, no. it's a pers- just like the attack on his website. It was fake a personal news. attack on him. Fake news. You are peddling fake news, sir, and you are banned from Mike Lindell's website. <sighs> anyway, aside from the actual journalists calling in to ask him legitimate questions, uh, there was, of course, prank phone calls like this one. But Mike, I have some bad news to tell you, I'm afraid, and I wish, I hope you can share this with everybody, but unfortunately, Alexa passed away just a few minutes ago from a drug overdose. Okay, that's a, this is a prank oh, call. This is a prank phone drugs. call. No, you it's... see what they're doing, everybody? You see what yeah. they're doing, everybody? That was an attack there because I brought up this great reporter, and that was an attack. You heard it here. This is what these attack groups are doing. Prime example there. Mm. And then the most famous one of all, which was shared far and wide after it happened, Mike Lindell got tricked into actually thinking that his president, Donald J. Trump, had called him personally to chat. And uh, they cut away from whatever they were doing in order to take this very important call, which obviously ended up being a prank by the host of a comedy podcast who was able to get, a, get in a few expletives before being hung up on. Here you go. I also saw the policy implications. I said a year ago. I think, got we got, issue? I think we got breaking news here with a guest. Hello? Hello, yes, I have Mr. Trump on standby. Are you ready? Yes. Go ahead, sir. Hello, everyone. Oh, we have the president here, our real president, everyone. Hello, Mr. President. MacronShow.com, bitches. Macron okay. All right. All right. I Sorry, guess that folks. wasn't. I guess that was. You see what they're doing? They're attacking us. They're attacking us, and this is what. Uh, I mean, it even came up. There he was hacking into our phones. It came up. So, so yeah, it, it was um, it was funny because they had someone like on video chat. And he's like, "All right, hold on, hold on, the president's on. here. You're getting bumped." So, and then he gets on the phone. He's like, this, and we got the president. Yeah, I, your president, like, just like still, <laughs> still towing that line, just being like, "Yeah, this is. We've got the real president on the phone here." And it's like it, it sounded like no one was even doing an impersonation. It sounded yeah. like they played a clip of being like, "Hello, <laughs> it's me, Donald Trump." Uh, and then like a podcast plug, but uh, yeah, he yeah. got he got duped on his own phone in front of everyone. But uh, the live stream it was also plagued with production problems outside of the fact that they were taking phone calls on a speakerphone with apparently no screening whatsoever. Like having a lawyer Alan Dershowitz listed on screen as Ben Carson and some <laughs> other things. Uh, but according to insiders reporting, the rest of the event it just was made up of the same kind of rhetoric that you'd expect from Lindell, but also included an announcement of his new documentary, Absolute Interference. Oh, here we go. Quote. This is going to change our world forever, everybody. This is proof and evidence that China was attacking our country. And you're going to know that this election was flipped. This is bad. It's real bad. Yeah. Uh, Then there was a segment where uh, the Pillow Man raged against Jimmy Kimmel for making fun of him and, uh, and, and making fun of Frank's speech. As well as the recently launched patriotic competitor to Amazon, the My Store. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's dropping any day now. He said I was on drugs and crack cocaine and all that stuff. He said, I'm lucky I have all my teeth. Maybe you're an addict too, Jimmy. And then he claimed that he was receiving death threats, spoke about how Costco canceled him. Mm-hmm. And then he claimed that he would be back on the site for more live streams every day or maybe every week. <laughs> we'll get to it. Quote, I'll sleep for a couple hours later and it'll be quality sleep on my my pillow." <laughs> Got to, got to plug in. Uh, but yeah, apparently the Jimmy Kimmel thing was just like, I mean, kind of saying what everyone else has said. Like, dude, you have a pillow empire. Mm-hmm. You were making literally hundreds of millions of dollars selling pillows. Why do you need to do this? Yeah. yeah. A, it, he really, he had, his, he had his shit set up. He had a great life. It is, and I say this all the time, it is insane when someone has their life on theoretical autopilot. He could have done anything in the world. He could he could have visited any country. Yeah. He could have done it. He could have been. The Why best would I visit any vacation. country when I already I live, live in the, the best one? The greatest country, the United States of America. True. A lot of people do think that way, but like, uh, it, he, he could have been on vacation forever. Instead, this man is like literally on a downward spiral. Like, even if all of this were true, it seems like a waste of time. Yeah. But yeah, all in all, a pretty good launch, uh, or at least just exactly what we expected except for the fact that it in no way resembles a social media website. So uh, our prediction that it would be overrun with pornography and naughty language was a bust because no one can post anything <laughs> unless you're Mike Lindell or whoever is curating the content uh, for the site alongside some 
authors, uh, one of whom seems to be a, just a marketing guy with a podcast who's cranking out content for Frank's speech, uh, a lot of which d d goes to that file not found link, so <laughs> I don't even know if it's real. Uh, and there's another author who just posts sports results below a headline. <laughs> um, but somehow this isn't the only Mike Lindell news uh, because on the eve of this big, of this big launch, uh, he announced that he would be suing Dominion Voting Systems for the same amount that they're suing him for. $1.6 billion. The lawsuits cancel each other out. Yeah, it's uh, double jeopardy. From CNBC, the new complaint from MyPillow filed in Minnesota federal court accuses Dominion of waging an illegal campaign to punish and silence their critics. MyPillow's lawsuit also makes a distinction between Lindell and his company, arguing, MyPillow has not engaged in discussion about the 2020 election. In making these statements, Mr. Lindell spoke for himself, not MyPillow, the lawsuit says. Andrew Parker, a lawyer for MyPillow, denied that MyPillow's court action constituted a countersuit against Dominion. But the lawsuit itself says it is being brought to remedy the grave harm that has been suffered by MyPillow as a result of Dominion's suppression of speech and attacks on the company. So now we have two separate MyPillow lawsuits. Cool. It's not a countersuit, but it, it, it we're suing back to stop the suit because they're messing with the pillow brand, which has nothing to do with it. Why would anyone uh, associate Mike Lindell with my pillow? Yeah, they're completely two different it's entities. It's not like he's on all of their marketing materials and he started using the official my pillow Twitter account <laughs> when his own Twitter account got shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like, he literally just said on his chaotic live stream that he's like, all I need is a good three hours or so on a my pillow. They're magic. I mean, that, that is a ringing endorsement of his pillows. Yeah, he's able to stay up 23 hours a day because the one hour he gets of sleep is so good on it's, that pillow. I'm telling you, it's all the pillows. Maybe a little bit of medication, but all pillows. <laughs> a medical doctor gave me these drugs. prescription drugs. Uh, yeah, anyways, uh, we do have some news that isn't pillow related for you, but first let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, Honey. We all shop online for pillows and other things. We've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout, but thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones that it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. Here's how it works. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Then you wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Yeah, that was uh, when we, we've talked about it before. We use it all the time. Anytime I shop online, it yep. uh, pops up. And if it's available, I use it. And more often than not, the site at least allows for the you to earn Honey Gold off of purchases. Yeah, if you earn a discount. You earn points whether or not you get a, a coupon code or not. Yeah, and, so. Uh, yeah. Very anyway, good stuff. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting our show. We use it and love it. So will you. So get Honey today for free at joinhoney.com slash itdaily. That is joinhoney.com slash itdaily. Thanks for sponsoring our show. Now back to the news. Yeah, back with a uh, an update on another terrible person who tends to pop up on this show every once in a while. <sighs> Ted Nugent. Uh, aging rock star Ted Nugent has been an outspoken conservative for years after shitting himself to avoid the draft. Which he now says he he, did, he was just joking about. Yeah. I would, I would have totally served in Vietnam. We probably would have won if I had been there. Yeah. It's too bad. But I didn't miss because of my poopy pants. Yeah. Uh, but his whole rhetoric, it really started to ramp up when Trump was in the White House. And, and his support for Trump culminated in a White House visit where this infamous photo was taken featuring the former president alongside Ted Nugent, Sarah Palin, and Kid Rock. That's what America looks like. Yeah, it's pretty much the perfect encapsulation of what things were like during these four years. Uh, something for the history books, no doubt. Like when you just, uh, what was it like? Look at this picture. It was a pretty wild time. Yeah. I, I mean, we've, I've already sort of forgotten how wild it was back then. We were living on full speed. We were. <laughs> Anyways, it should come as no surprise that Ted Nugent nailed pretty much every bad take regarding COVID during the pandemic, and including blasting restrictions during last Thanksgiving, where he stated, there are dirty, rotten, soulless bastards in positions of power that are trying to tell us how we can celebrate Thanksgiving with our families. He would go on to say the coronavirus was, quote, not a real pandemic. He said that the vaccines were not real and that, quote, I can't, I ain't taking no vaccine. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, he also most recently asked why there was no lockdowns for COVIDs 1 through 18. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We had yeah. all these other COVIDs. And then why is it the 19th COVID where uh, uh, people give a shit now? It's like, hmm? 
So that's been debunked for so long <laughs> that it makes sense to me that he probably like came up with that in the bathtub or something. Probably. Like he was just like, hold on. Oh, whoa. Has anyone said this before? Anyways. Yeah. In an ironic twist of fate that proves that just because you don't believe in something or don't think it will affect you or think that it's overblown nonsense, that doesn't mean it's not real and serious, yeah. especially for someone in his age group. Ted Nugent has tested positive for COVID-19 and apparently has not been enjoying his time with this extremely contagious virus. No. As reported earlier today by the Associated Press, quote, I thought I was dying, Nugent said in a Facebook Live video posted Monday. I literally could hardly crawl out of bed the last few days, adding, so I was officially tested positive for COVID-19 today. Oof. In the video shot at his Michigan ranch, the Cat Scratch Fever singer repeatedly uses racist... <laughs> Jesus, <Yeah>. what? <laughs> yeah. Repeatedly uses racist slurs to, to refer to COVID-19 and reiterates his previous stance that he wouldn't be getting the vaccine because he claims wrongly that nobody knows what's in it. Yeah. Oh, he called it the, the China virus. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, other, the other variations on that. He's very angry at specifically the Chinese for uh, getting him infected in April 2021. I'm telling damn, you. Damn you, Chairman Xi, for infecting <laughs> Ted Nugent. Yeah. Uh, anyways, the uh, of course, the ingredients for the vaccines, they, they are widely known and available, and you can easily find explanations on how these vaccines work online. Uh, also... The vaccines are, in fact, working very well, despite a few bottlenecks and a temporary pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which uh, that pause, it might be lifted as soon as this Friday. Yeah. They're just going to put, like, warnings like, hey, uh, there's a one in a million. Literally, it's one in a million. Yeah. There's seven people in seven million or whatever chance that this could develop into blood clots. Also, the risk group is women from 18 to 49. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that's unpaused. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, as soon as Friday, it might be on pause. Also, as of Monday of this week, the eligibility requirements for the vaccine have been completely removed for anyone over the age of 16. So you can now go out and schedule your appointment and get your vaccine if you weren't able to before then. Yeah. Of course, that depends on the availability of where you live. But like we've said before, just broaden your search area a little bit or look in the more conservative areas nearby. And yeah. Hopefully, if you if you really want to get it and you try hard enough, you will be able to find an appointment and get your jab so we can all get back to normal or something resembling normal. We're so close. We're so fucking Very close. Soon. And that's why it's so funny that Ted Nugent got the fucking virus in April 2021. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, don't listen to stupid dipshits like Ted Nugent, a man who literally could have been vaccinated for weeks, if not months now. He was like could have been in the first group. Yep. Yeah. Who instead decided to align himself with other older conservative men and say that the virus, that COVID is overblown and he's not getting that dang vaccine and now has to suffer with the virus, has potentially spread it to others, and looks like a fucking idiot. Yeah. Get your vaccine. Go look for appointments now. Come on. Some local and state level websites are confusing or they suck. But oddly enough, a good resource is just looking on your local city or state subreddit page for <laughs> information. Because a lot of them have vaccine information posts pinned to the top of the subreddit with people inside directing you where to go. Or just call up your local CVS. They'll walk you through it. Yeah, like CVS, Rite Aid, Walgreens, uh, grocery stores with pharmacies in them. Yeah. The the problem that I saw online was like with the the California one, like after the restrictions were lifted. The restrictions were lifted in Los Angeles like a week ago. Yeah. And they just never updated the website. And they're like, well, we can't, we can't schedule you because you don't have uh, like lifelong diabetes yeah. or cancer. Like, no, I'm allowed to get it now. Did you see? Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. So it's like people are like, no, I don't want to lie. And it's like, you're not. It's, you're, it's available Just for you. Just fill out whatever it takes. Anyway, You're not breaking any rules. Moving on from there, though. Josh, 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 Josh. What, what is happening online with the sudden abundance of memes, images, posts, and discussions regarding a bunch of Joshes engaging in all-out war? Well, if you've spent any time on Reddit in the past few days, you'll have no doubt noticed the overwhelming amount of posts regarding a bunch of Joshes fighting each other. But where did this come from? Why is it popping up all of a sudden? Um, the answer is really, really simple. It's also very stupid. But again, it's nice to have some har harmless, stupid, inconsequential bullshit every once in a while to offset all the terrible things going on. So this is a, a fun meme, yeah, a fun one for everyone. It's nice to be able to josh around sometimes. Yeah. So basically about a year ago, a screenshot went viral showing a group message on Facebook Messenger, which had apparently gathered together everyone named Josh Swain on the platform and said the following. You're probably wondering why I've gathered you all here <laughs> with one of the Josh's responding because we all share the same names. Precisely. 4-24-2021, 12 o'clock p.m. Meet at these coordinates. 
we fight. Whoever wins gets to keep the name. Everyone else has to change their name. You have a year to prepare. Good luck. So, uh, yeah, that's just a fun, harmless post of a screenshot that may or may not have even actually happened. Yeah. But we'd like to imagine that it did because it's pretty harmless and it was probably funny for those involved. Hey, we all have the same name. Yeah. Isn't that there great? There can only be one. We're like the Highlander. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it has been a year. And April 24th is just a few short days away. And apparently everyone on the Internet seems to be anticipating a huge brawl between a bunch of people named Josh at the coordinates that were listed. Those coordinates, they pretty much land smack dab in the middle of the country if you were only counting the lower 48. So just outside Lincoln, Nebraska. Now, whether anyone actually shows up to this random field somewhere off of Interstate 80 in Nebraska is anyone's guess, but you'd have to assume that no one actually named Josh Swain will be there, and it'll most likely be a few local Redditors coming together for a meme, if anything. This is basically like the Raid Area 51 event, except even less viral, and would have to con just consist of a bunch of people with the same name booking flights across the country in order to fight each other for there to be any point to this at all. No one's going and taking their first post-COVID vacation to fucking Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm sorry. Well, I am going to Birmingham, Alabama, but that's for a music festival in September. Yeah, that's a reason. I got, I'm going to Florida to see my parents, but that's see my parents. But yeah, Lincoln, Nebraska, probably not the first place yeah. on a lot of people's, uh, you know, vision boards. Uh, I, I do think that people are going to show up because there's there's a pretty big university in Lincoln, yeah. Lincoln so it's just going to be people like <laughs> Reddit meetup. <laughs> any, any Josh is here? Hey, anyone named Josh? You want to you want fight? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, still there are people who claim they're going to stream the event, which yeah. again. Is probably just going to be a few locals talking about memes in a field. But like we said in a recent episode, there's an entire popular Twitch channel dedicated to watching a stop sign right now. So uh, this Josh stream could pull some views. Yeah, is Bruce Green going to head out there for the big event? <laughs> like he did with uh, Area 51? It's a bit bit farther to drive. It was, he went for like three hours. It yeah, was insane. Yeah, strange. Wow. Anyway, we will be sure to keep you updated on all this, but uh, honestly, nothing's going to happen. No. We're just letting you know why a bunch of Josh memes are being spread with little to no explanation. See you there, I guess. Yeah. Only if you're vaccinated, though. Yeah. No unvaccinated Josh is allowed. Yeah. Only. Well, there's, you know, it could be one Josh who's, like, ultra conservative, and he goes there with the virus and inadvertently kills the other Josh. Wow. Ugh. Anyways, now for some actual serious news updates before we go. Uh, since, you know, we, we were writing today's episode. Uh, it's pretty late in the day, it's but late in the yeah, day. while we were writing so, it. So, yeah, the verdict in the trial against former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin for the killing of George Floyd, uh, that happened today. And it turns out there is some justice left in the world because Chauvin was found guilty on all three counts. Get fucked. Yeah. Second and third degree murder as well as second degree manslaughter. Yeah, it only happened had to happen in broad daylight with yeah. people filming. Literally caught in 4K. Yeah. Like... The and if you follow the trial, the trial was infuriating. They were like the the defense. They're like, well, I don't know. George Floyd was on the ground pretty close to like the tailpipe of that car. So it could have yeah. just been carbon monoxide they poisoning. They had to bring back uh, the blood uh, or the experts who analyzed like his blood and stuff like that to be like, no, there was no amounts of carbon monoxide. Like it was an insane defense. Yeah. They had to bring back people to be like, no, also yeah, that's like, not true. The fact that this even had to go to trial because like the whole thing is like, would George Floyd be alive if it weren't for Derek Chauvin's actions? It's like, yes, anyone with fucking two eyes or even one eye can see that that is the case. But they had, you know, they had to do the whole process. And I'm glad the process finally fucking worked out because in the past, uh, a lot of bad cops have gotten away with everything. Yes. Anyways. And uh, there's going to be more trials coming up uh, because America just don't stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From NBC News. Chauvin stood up quickly after the judge ordered his bail revoked and compliantly placed his hands to be handcuffed before he was let out of the courtroom. He faces up 75 years in prison when he returns for sentencing in eight weeks. Good. Uh, after the verdict was announced, uh, House oh, Speaker Nancy no. Pelosi chimed in saying, Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. Because of you and because of thousands, millions of people around the world who came out for justice, your name will always be synonymous for justice. Um... Shut up, Nancy. Uh, look, he didn't sacrifice his life. He was fucking murdered. He was, yeah, he was murdered. Uh, we, I'm sure that he would much rather be alive. Yeah. I'm sure that his family would much rather <laughs> yeah. have him be alive. Uh, it's great that justice, uh, he got justice, I guess. Just an odd comment. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't wake up that day like, I'm going to do something for racial justice. He just got fucking killed. I don't know. Yeah, this is a bad tweet. She got ratioed real bad for this. Yeah, so uh, anyways, there's a lot worse out there. Go look at... Uh, Tammy's. Tammy Lauren. 
Tommy, Tommy Loren. Poor T Tommy. Yeah. You guys got your justice. Like, what the fuck, bitch? Shut the fuck up. The worst. Anyways, uh, yeah, so that, that happened at the tail end of today as we were uh, finishing the episode and, and driving in here to film. Um, it's, it's, it's justice. It's good. It's good. That it, it's just not the, good. The that tiniest, happened. tiniest grain of justice. It kind of sucks that mm. it literally had to be caught mm. in 4K for some justice to finally happen, but it did. Um, in the meantime, uh, we'll see you soon for a new episode of Tech News Day. Check out other episodes over here, including a brand new episode of Weekly Weird News, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.